All right, this is Russell James Hawley again from the uh, Tate Geological Museum at Casper College. And today I'm going to be talking about these things. So what is that? Do you know what that is? Yes, you are correct. It's a pterodactyl. And a pterodactyl was one of the reptiles that flew through the sky during the dinosaur age. And a pterodactyl had four toes on each hind foot. Now that'll be important in a moment. For a long time, nobody knew how pterodactyls moved when they were on the ground. Did they walk on their hind feet like a bird? Did they scoot on their stomach like a penguin or what? Nobody knew, and there was no way to tell until people found pterodactyl footprints right here in Wyoming near the town of Alcova. This is a cast. The original specimen is directly behind me in this display case. Uh, here you can clearly see the marks of one, two, three, four toes. There's a narrow triangular heel. This is just the right shape to have been made by a pterodactyl's foot. But look what we've got here. This is a handprint. So that uh, is the thumb, the second finger, and the long third finger pointing back. So that shows us that when a pterodactyl was on the ground, it didn't walk on its hind feet at all. It crawled on all fours like a vampire bat. We never would have known that if we hadn't found these footprints. So this is a good example of how footprints can provide you with extra information about prehistoric animals. Now we had our uh, model maker, a fellow named Jim Copen, build this model over my head to be just the right size to fit the footprints from Alcova. So this is how big the pterodactyls were that lived here in Wyoming at the end of the Jurassic period. Not big enough to swoop down and carry away Raquel Welch like you sometimes see in the movies. Now there were larger flying reptiles than the pterodactyl. Uh, in Kansas, near the end of the Cretaceous period, there was a bigger one called Pteranodon. The head of the Pteranodon, just the head, was this long. Uh, this is the hand of the Pteranodon right there. Compared to the pterodactyl hand, you've got the little short thumb, second finger, third finger. Thumb, second finger, third finger. Much larger fingers on this. And then that's the base of the fourth finger. The rest of it is not included on this cast, but uh, it's very long. Incidentally, that's how the pterodactyl got its name. The leading edge of the wing was supported by this very long ring finger, hence the name uh, pterodactyl, which means wing finger, because the wing was supported on its finger. The wingspan of the pteranodon the big flying reptile from Kansas, was eight meters tip to tip. Now, just in case you're not yet familiar with the metric system, let me show you what eight meters looks like. Here, hold this string. You hold this and stay there, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm still coming over here, and I'm coming over here, and I'm now over here. So if there was a pteranodon, here in this museum, the tip of one wing would be over here and you'd be holding the tip of that wing over there. So they got big. In fact, the pteranodon was bigger than any flying animal in the world today. 